So we've already seen active low-pass filters. Let's now turn our attention to active high-pass filters. It turns out that the design procedure for high-pass filters is very similar to the design procedure for low-pass filters. So as a review, let's take a quick look at the transfer function of a low-pass Butterworth filter. You're seeing it right now. What I'm now going to do is to modify the transfer function and turn it into a high-pass filter. You see, not much has changed. Let's now take a look at both of these transfer functions and remind ourselves why each of these transfer functions has the form that it does. First, let's start with the low-pass Butterworth filter, and let's see what happens to the transfer function as the frequency gets smaller and smaller. As the frequency gets smaller and smaller, we can see that the magnitude of the transfer function approaches the DC gain H0. As the frequency approaches infinity, that is, as the frequency gets higher and higher, we can see that the magnitude of the transfer function approaches zero. We can thus clearly see that this transfer function describes a low-pass filter because it passes low frequencies and it blocks high frequencies. Let's now do the same thing with the transfer function for a high-pass Butterworth filter and see what happens. As the frequency approaches zero, the transfer function approaches zero. As the frequency gets large, that is, as the frequency approaches infinity, the magnitude of the transfer function approaches its DC value H0. We can now see that this transfer function appropriately describes the behavior of a high-pass filter, because when the frequency is small, the output is zero, and when the frequency is high, the output approaches its DC value. So it passes the high frequencies and it blocks the low frequencies. Let's take a look at the transfer function for various filter orders. It's a lot like the low-pass filter. When we start to increase in, we see that the behavior of the high-pass filter starts to mirror the behavior of a perfect high-pass filter. The more poles we have, or the greater the order of the filter, the more closely this filter looks like a perfect high-pass filter. What kind of circuit should we use to design a high-pass filter? Well, it turns out that the circuit and the design procedure for a high-pass filter filter are nearly identical to those of a low-pass filter. The difference in the Salem key circuit is very subtle. The resistors and capacitors have just changed positions. Everywhere I had a resistor in the low-pass filter, I replace it with a capacitor. And everywhere I've had a capacitor in the low-pass filter, I replace it with a resistor. So you just interchange the positions of the resistors and the capacitors. The design procedure is the same in both cases. We just need to specify the order in the cutoff frequency F sub B, and then using the procedure that we used for the low-pass filter, we can obtain the design, the resistors, capacitors, and feedback resistors. Let's work an example. Let's design a second-order active high-pass Butterworth filter with a cutoff frequency of 100 Hz. Because it's only a second-order circuit rather than a fourth-order circuit, like we saw with the low-pass case, we're only going to need one Salen key circuit. Let's draw the Bode magnitude plot of this particular circuit. What do we want the filter to actually do? The cutoff frequency is 100 Hz. It's a high-pass filter, so the circuit should pass high frequencies and it should block the lower frequencies. And because it's a second-order filter, that is, there are two poles, two capacitors, then we know that there's going to be 40 decibels per decade roll-off of this circuit. So if we go down, for example, to 10 hertz, we should be approximately 40 decibels below the DC point, 20 decibels per decade. Let's now find the components for this circuit. What resistors and capacitors should we choose? Well, in fact, because the cutoff frequency was exactly as it was for the low-pass filter, we can make the same choice for capacitor and we'll end up getting the same resistor that we got for that circuit. That is, if we choose a capacitor C as 100 nanofarads, then we're going to end up with a resistor R of 15.92 kiloohms, and of course we can round that to 15.8 kiloohms in order to be able to find a standard resistor value. As for the feedback resistor, we can again choose 10 kiloohms, and because we have a second order filter, I know what K is. Now that we know the value of every component in the circuit, that completes the design of the high pass filter.